Hi everybody, welcome to the Matt Western 365 YouTube channel. And today what we're going to be talking about is Power Automate and when we should be using Compose or when we should be using Variable Actions. So when we are creating our flows, we have the need and the requirement to really hold data in a temporary basis while we're going through our flows. And we have two ways of being able to do that. We either can use compose actions or we can use variables. Both of these are, uh, are valid in terms of being able to hold that data temporarily while we're running through our flows, but both have, a, have different applications. They have different use cases. And those use cases tend to get lost in terms of uh, when people are trying to figure out whether they should be using a variable or whether they should be using a compose. And so what we're going to be looking at are some of the uh, some of the comparisons. So we can see when we should be using one versus the other. And then we'll have a look at a demo and we can actually put them into practice. So let's go and start off by looking at the differences between variables and between compose. So to start off with then, Whenever we talk about variables, we are really talking about something that is typed. That is uh, a meaning that we give it a data type. So we could say that we're going to give this a data type of a string. We could give it a data type of a Boolean. It's going to hold that data type and it's going to use that data type to validate what we give it in terms of our data. If it doesn't match the data type that it's looking for, it's going to error. It's going to bum out. But that means that it's at least given us that validation over, over the, the data that we're putting into it in the first place. Compose, on the other hand, is designed to be typeless. That means it's very, very flexible. I can give it anything. I can give it arrays. I can give it JSON. I can give it XML. I can give it anything that I want to. And it will gladly accept it. It's designed to be extremely flexible. And we'll see how that, uh, what, where that flexibility comes in as we go through. Variables have an update function. That means that I can set it and then I can reset it or I can overwrite it. So it means it's very, very flexible. I can use it, uh, I can give it different values at different points throughout my flow. On the other hand, compose doesn't have the update function. Therefore, effectively, I can set it once uh, and that's it. But both variables and compose are both designed to take whatever data we give it and allow us to reuse it multiple times. So for example, if I want to, uh, rather than typing something every single, uh, multiple times throughout my flow, I can store it in a variable or I can store it in Compose, and then I can reuse that, uh, that content or that data as we go through. It means that I don't have to keep rekeying, uh, rekeying things all the way through. When it comes to the way that we access the, um, the variables from dynamic content, it's very, very neat because number one, we can actually see the name of the variable that we, um, that we've declared in the dynamic content. It also gets grouped together under a single heading, under a variables heading. So that means it's very, very simple for me to identify what my variables are and which variable I want to use based on, based on the name that we give it. Compose, on the other hand, really, all we get with Compose is an output. So we give it some data and it's going to offer that data then as an output. So I can, I can, all of my Compose actions, if I've got several, will all be outputs. The only way that I can identify them is through the name of the action, of the Compose action itself. And when we see this in action in a moment, it'll just highlight how important it is to actually rename your actions as you go through. But it's again, it just maintains that flexibility um, because it's just a control uh, that we're putting on, uh, putting in, and then we're using it again. Variables need to be initialized. That initialization process means that I have to give it a name. I have to give it a type. I don't have to give it a value at that point, but I have to have an action that is specifically uh, initializing that variable. When we initialize variables, the initialization action can't sit within a scope. And it's generally at the top level of the flow. So it means that before I actually get into the full body of my, uh, of my flow, of my actual process that I'm doing, I may have several actions, all initializing variables that need to be done before I actually start processing anything. 
Compose can be created anywhere. It can be in a scope. It can be absolutely at any uh, called at any point throughout my flow because at the end of the day, it's just an action, an action that gives us an output. So that means that I can treat it with the same rules as I would any other action. So I can create it and uh, and then use it anywhere. So let's go and actually see that all in action. So the first demo we're going to look at is using Compose. Now, like we mentioned earlier on, Compose is designed to be very, very flexible. It can be used anywhere in my uh, in my flow. Well, let's just go and create a basic one to start off with. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go and add an action and I'm going to go and select Compose. And it's part of my data operation connector. And as you can see, amongst my data operations, I've got a Compose action here. So if I select Compose, all it's asking for is inputs. And so inputs can be given anything. But in my flow, I've got a very basic, um, very basic condition, which is testing to see if today is Saturday. Um, so I'm going to say that in this one, uh, today is Saturday. And that's just the string that I'm going to give it. Very, very simple. It's not going to do any validation on it. It's not going to throw a wobbly if I give it something else. It's purely going to just hold today is Saturday as a string. So what I'm going to do is, like I've said, I can use my Compose anywhere. So I could leave it there if I want to. I could bring it down into here. And then I can then reuse it. So for example, if I come into my body, I could say that I'm going to use the outputs. Now, as you can see here, the only thing it actually gives me is outputs. And the only way I can identify what this belongs to is based on the name of the action itself on this gray bar. So this is particularly uh, can become particularly messy if I come and do something like this. Uh, and if I say today is not Saturday, because if I come to my dynamic content, then in my dynamic content, I have two lots of outputs. And the only way that I can uh, distinguish between the two of these is by looking at this gray bar. So good practice anyway, but certainly needed for compose actions make sure you rename it. So if I go for compose Saturday and compose not Saturday. So this now gives me the ability to um, see both of those and identify them based on the name of the, the action. However, if I'm trying to make my, uh, my flow as efficient as possible. So for example, not having multiple send emails, but potentially trying to uh, trying to reuse both of these in that one email, this isn't going to work. Because if I try and reference not Saturday and Saturday in this action, then one of these based on the condition is never going to exist. So that is going to error, it's going to give me an issue in my flow checker. So the only way that I can actually prevent that is effectively by doing this by oops, let's get rid of that one by having multiple mail items. So effectively, that means that uh, in order for me to use Compose, it has to exist in the uh, in the, fl the the logical flow of uh, of our route through. So I can't use a, a Compose action in, with an action that are in, in different legs, which, uh, which risks um, effectively not happening. So, uh, so that would be my option here. However, um, if I do go down this route, and this is perfectly fine, it might be that I, I, I don't mind having the two different uh, the, the two different actions taking place here. So if I go Compose Not Saturday, I've got Compose Saturday. Um, let's actually look at how I can use Compose here. So uh, I've got two here. I've got two fields that I could potentially want, uh, want to rekey. And I could quite easily type an email address into both of those. Or, you know what, let's actually just go and create a Compose here. Let's say that this is my compose email address. Let's go and put an email in there. And then down here, I've set it once. You know what, I can use it multiple times. And because this exists above the logic, above the, uh, the branch, then it means I can reuse it. So, Compose designed to be very flexible, but obviously does have a few of these uh, these small things that you just need to be aware of in terms of how they can be reused. 
But what happens if I really don't want two emails, I only want one, I, but I want different values being assigned uh, going through the branches? Then that's where variables really start to come in. So let's come across to my variable demo. Now in variables, if I come to add and add an action, let's go and search for a variable. I have a variable connector. And in here, I have a number of actions. And like I mentioned earlier on, I have to initialize a variable first of all. So let's go and initialize it. And I can give it a name. Uh, so I'm going to call this my day response. I have to give it a type, whether it's Boolean, whether it's string and so on. So I'm going to select a string. And at this point, I don't have to give it a value. That's absolutely fine. If I come down into my email down the bottom, then I can come down here and I can see that under variables, I've got day response. So I can select day response there. But now, how do I interact with that? Because at the moment, my day response doesn't have a value. So if I come into my condition, which is doing exactly the same check as before, it's testing to see if the day is Saturday. If I come into one side and I come and set my variable, then what it's going to ask me to do is give uh, select the variable which I've initialized. So in this case, it's going to be my day. And I can give it a value. Uh, so today is Saturday. I can do exactly the same on the other side. I can set variable. I can select day response again, because we've initialized the variable. All I'm doing here is giving it a value. Today is not Saturday. So now, when I come through my logic, regardless of which way we go in this branch, my variable of day response is always going to exist, which means that I can have just a single email action down here. But because I've got these updates, depending on which route through my logic it's going to go, day response is either going to say today is Saturday or today is not Saturday. It's going to get a value. And so then when it comes to my email, my email body is going to have one of those responses. And all I'm doing is reusing that one single variable. So variables, whilst they are um, they have more rigidity around them than what a compose action has, it does mean that we can reuse them in this way. And this becomes very useful if we need to keep setting things and resetting things as we go through. But there's no reason why I couldn't then come, to, uh, come up to here or anywhere else within my flow and do exactly what I did before, which was I can set my email address because in this case, this isn't gonna change. And then I can still reuse that. So I hope going through that that side by side presentation, and then looking at the two demos of the two different types of uh, types of um, temporary data storage, actually in action, is is helping you to understand what the differences are between the two, and the use cases for using both of them. Should you be using compose, or should you be using variable? The answer is completely down to you and how you see your logic in your uh, in your flow. Just remember, if you just need to set it once and reuse it multiple times, then compose, very lightweight, very simple to use, uh, and you can reuse that multiple times. You just need to remember to rename it so that when you're looking for your outputs, you can identify it by the name of the action. If you want to set something, uh, set something and reset it, maybe in different uh, branches of logic or maybe override the value as you go through, then that's where you need to use a variable. Just remember with a variable, you need to type it. And if it, you provide a data type that's not compatible with that data type, then it will error. So it's giving you that validation. But both options are there on the table for you. And I hope just going through those in a practical sense has helped, to, uh, helped you to figure out when you should be using both of those. If, if you need any help with any of this, or if you need to ask any more advice, please do either subscribe to the channel, post on the uh, post on this video, reach out to me on Twitter at MattWeston365, or find me on LinkedIn, again, at MattWeston365, and I'll be happy to give you a hand. But for now, I hope that was useful, and I look forward to speaking to you again next time.